morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Here. Um, you know, God, God is doing awesome things. It was awesome. Um, yesterday at the uh, at the youth event, Sister Jen pointed this out. It's 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 so cool how like God is using is using us um, in a powerful way. And a lot of times when we do things for God, we don't really uh, we don't really um, see it that way. Like, wow, I'm being used by God. Well, you know, Brother Steve did Wednesday's uh, Wednesday sermon, um, his, the teaching, which was amazing. Um, Sister Jen, yeah, Sister Jen did uh, yesterday at the bread ministry. Look at me, and so it's just one after the other. Um, and today is, is my turn, so it's just so cool. It's so awesome how God uh, He wants to use us for His glory, and when when we uh, are open to that, you know, just things just things just change, and you 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 uh. We start to see God move, and uh, it's just it's just an awesome thing, and it feels so good. And and yeah, it can be scary, but that's why we rely on God's strength, and He sees us through it each and every time. Amen. So uh, you know, obviously, I, I I've done this plenty of times, but I get nervous, and uh, <laughs> just this is no different. But you know, God has always been there with me and with everyone here. And uh, with that, um, it's just my honor to to preach the Palm Sunday. Service. Uh, I had to do a lot of research on it. I read, I you know, I read the gospels, I read the stories, but to really dig dig deep, um, it's just something else. It's so awesome when we uh, meditate and study God's word because there's so much truth. And to be honest, there's so much that can be said, but I have to condense it. And uh, well, let's hope I condense it. I have a lot in here, so let me get started. <laughs> okay, so this is the day our Christian brothers and sisters from all around the world they're celebrating. Jesus' triumphant entry into the holy city of Jerusalem. So, uh, on this day, it's a day of great rejoicing and praise, just like how what we, what we were doing, um, God's presence was here. Well, this is a day of celebration. Jesus was coming in as king. He was coming in as Messiah. Um, so, the people in Jerusalem, they were rejoicing um, and, and giving him praise and adoration. Uh, and the, you know they were singing, they were saying, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest heavens! Uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. See, Palm Sunday it marks the first day, um, the, what is often called, like in, in our Christian circles, Christian communities, as Passion Week. Um, so Passion Week is, are the final seven days of Jesus's earthly ministry. Very, just it, it's a it's a time where he knew the end, the end was coming. Um, see, Christ's ministry started. It was about uh, about three years, three years, and uh, from from the time he was baptized by John the Baptist up until this week. Um, and as we all know, you know, Jesus t- turned the whole world around. He changed everything in those three years with the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, all four gospel accounts. They uh, this is one of the few one of the few uh, stories. Um, that all four gospel accounts report, um, and each of them they they report different details of, of this event. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just go through uh, Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 11, and uh, I'll also touch on a few of the other the other accounts because, like I said, there's details in each and every one, and and it's so it's so good to read through them all because um, it just gives you that fuller picture of, of this this important day. So with that, let me go ahead and read Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. And this is um, out of the NIV. So Matthew 21. As they approached Jerusalem and, and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. 
the the crowds um, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth, from Nazareth in Galilee. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for being here today, Lord God. Thank you for being in our midst and, and just, just by your Holy Spirit, God, just being here and allowing us to worship you and to learn from your word, Lord God. Lord, I just pray, Father God, that you would speak through me, Lord, and so that you're, you can get all the praise and glory, Lord God. And please open our hearts and our minds to receive your word, Lord God. Please teach us what you want us to know, Lord God, because, because you are triumphant, Lord God. Um, you, you've done so much for us, Lord, and you still do so much every day in our lives, Lord God. So we just thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. So, Matt, so, so um, I have three points. The first point, number one, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem was marked by humility. You see, Jesus came on a donkey. <laughs> um, you know, even though he's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords. He's, he's the creator. Um, he created this, this earth. God, uh, God, it says in the Bible that God um, created everything through Jesus Christ. Um, you see, but his life was, uh, it was marked by humility, low, lowliness, gentleness, and servanthood. And his life is an example for all of us to follow. You see, Jesus, if he really wanted to, he could have came on 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 his on his horse, a stallion with chariots and armies and uh, luxury and gold. He was, he, and that would have been fitting. He is um, God Almighty. Right. But you see, look, instead he comes on a donkey. He comes on on you know most people when we think of a donkey, we don't think of anything like royalty or anything like that. It's just a it's a farm animal. It's a beast of burden, which which means you know they were there to to help people. Um, with farming and, and just things like that. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is, this this donkey, it was uh, specially prepared. Its destiny was to uh, have the king, have the Lord to sit on him. Um, in one of the gospel accounts, it says that this donkey has never been ridden before. So this was reserved from from the point of its birth to uh, to just have the Messiah sit on him. Wow. So, you know, that donkey, it's pretty cool. And uh, also... The reason why Jesus rode in on a donkey is because he was fulfilling prophecy. Um, the prophet, I, the prophet Zechariah, about five hundred years prior, he wrote he wrote down that uh, that prophecy that God gave him that we just read. It's in Zechariah Ze, Zechariah nine verse nine. Again, I'll read. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion! Shout, daughter of Jerusalem! See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. You see, Jesus was uh, Jesus was clearly proclaiming himself to be the Messiah, the long-awaited king, uh, the, the long-awaited savior of, of, of Israel. And uh, you see, before this, Christ would often tell others not to, like when he was doing his miracles in his ministry, he was telling others, don't say, don't tell anyone about this. Don't tell anyone who I am. He, he, because it wasn't his time yet, he still had much work to do, and he knew the people's hearts. They would crown him as king forcefully, but it wasn't his time. He still had to do the Father's work and teach. And, uh, but at this moment, and Palm Sunday, Jesus, Jesus was clearly showing everyone, I am the one you've been waiting for. I am the promised king. I am the promised savior. And, uh, and there was people who, who knew the prophecy, and that's why they came and, and they hailed him as, as that Messiah. And uh, I have a few examples of just how how um, humble our Lord is, and how in his life how um, that highlighted his 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 humbleness, his humility, his lowliness. Um, you know, remember Jesus Christ? He was born in a manger with animals, and I'm sure it didn't smell nice. <laughs> you know, it didn't smell nice. It was it was dark and dingy, but. The same, the same, the same uh, concept. Jesus could have been born in a palace, and it was still would have been fitting. He is, he is the King of Kings. 
But see, Jesus was born in a manger. Uh, Jesus, uh, when one of his disciples, one of the followers uh, wanted to follow Jesus, Jesus' reply was, uh, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to rest his head. Jesus didn't have earthly possessions. He didn't have a house over his head. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't have much at all other than what was, you know, sandals on his feet and whatever what was provided to him um, by, by the men and women who supported him. So you see, Jesus, um, he was, in, in the earthly sense, he was poor. But we know who his true riches were, were his relationship with his father. Um, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And uh, even Peter, uh, even Peter basically tried to rebuke Jesus, saying, wait, what are you doing? I should be washing your feet. Uh, and this was an example that Jesus was setting, that we should serve one another. Jesus said that I came to serve and not to be served. Yeah. Yeah. So you see how humble our Lord is. And two more points, you know, Jesus, as we know, <laughs> instead of having a crown of gold and jewelry and, and just as, you know, as kings of the day did, he had a crown of thorns. And instead of a throne, he had a cross. See how Jesus, how humble and, and awesome our God is. So um, in John 6, verse 38, uh, Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven. See, Jesus Christ came from heaven. He has everything. In the Old Testament, um, God says that, uh, you know, I have a thousand cattle and a thousand hills, which, you know, symbolic is meaning he's, he's rich. He has everything. And, and God and God also says that uh, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of temple could you build for me? Meaning, you know, God God is in none, no need of any of our kind of riches. But you see, Jesus humbled himself to uh, to be a servant. And so that's why we need to be also remember mm-hmm. that. We shouldn't think too highly of ourselves. Let's follow our Lord if we're disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's also be humble and let's serve one another as Jesus showed us. So again, point number one, it says, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem was marked by humility. Number two, Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem was met with great praise and honor. And it was just so awesome how we we sung the songs today about Hosanna, uh, you know, glory to God. It's it's so fitting because that's what the people, that's what the people, uh, were shouting when he came into their city. Again, in Matthew 21, verses 8 through 11, I'll read it. Verse 8, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Um, I just want to point out, you know, in, in those days, people didn't have much at all, and there was no stores to go buy new clothes. They had to basically weave it and knit it themselves. So what they were doing they were, they were literally, literally, quite literally taking the clothes off their backs, putting it on the ground, because they were showing homage to Jesus, letting the donkey ride over it, giving him a royal procession. Um, so, yeah, and then they cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus... When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. They heard of Jesus. Uh, The people of Jerusalem met Jesus and were anticipating his arrival. Um, They heard about the great miracles that he's done. Um, Word spreads fast. And, uh, you know, Jesus, the people heard that he healed, he cleansed lepers, he healed the sick, he raised people from the dead. Uh, this was a prophet that no one, you know, no one has seen anything like this in their lifetime. Um, you see, see, in the, in the, since the last book of the Old Testament, uh, the book of Malachi, there was about 400 years of silence uh, as far as God sending prophets to Israel. So there was, there was a drought as far as like new revelations from God. So the, from the time Malachi was written up until the birth, of, well, up until John the Baptist. Um, John the Baptist was pretty much like when the last, um, the last prophet in like the Old Testament sense of the word. 
and we know he's the forerunner. So there's a 400 year uh, gap of just the people want, there's like a drought and they were, they were anticipating, they were thirsty for the Messiah. They knew the Messiah would come and redeem Israel. But for 400 years, there really wasn't, there really wasn't anything. Um, so when they heard about Jesus and everything that he was doing, that's why, that's one reason why they were there and they met him because they're like, this is him. He's finally here. He's our Messiah. Um, and, and basically, you know, they wanted Jesus to restore the kingdom of Israel. Uh, that's what, what the promise of the Messiah was, was for them. Um, um, let's see. And also, the reason why there was large crowds as well in Jerusalem is because there was, it was the time of the Passover. That was a significant day in, in, for the Jewish people. Um, and we know the Passover is when um, the death angel passed over the children of Israel and, and, and spared um, the firstborn of, 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 their, of their families because they put the blood over their walls, just as God commanded. And basically the Egyptians, they were the ones who, who uh, felt God's wrath. So it's, 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 it was a very important week. So there was many people all throughout Judea came, who came to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Um, so what they were doing is they were coronating Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And they, they laid down palm trees. And in the ancient times, um, palm branches symbolized goodness, victory, triumph, and peace. Um, it wasn't just the Israelites who, who, uh, who held that in, uh, as a symbolic symbol of significance. The Greeks, the Romans, it was just a common, um, a common symbol of victory, goodness, triumph, and peace. Even King Solomon, um, when he built the first temple, God told him to encarve palm branches in the temple um, as, as that symbol, because it was very significant. So they knew what they were doing. It was very deliberate. They were hailing our Lord as, as their Messiah. Uh, so, and, and also, as they were shouting Hosanna, um, Hosanna to the son of David, those weren't just words that they came up with on the spot. Those, those were uh, very, very uh, significant words. They are prophetic, and, and their origination is um, in Psalms. So King David actually wrote this prophetically. Um, Psalm 118, verses 25 through 26. Um, and it says, Lord, save us. Hosanna means Lord, save us. So when they were saying Hosanna to the son of David, they were calling him, Lord, save us, save us now. Uh, so Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. You see that? So these people, these people were ready to receive Jesus Christ as Messiah. Okay, so that is, uh, that's what they were doing on Sunday. They were, they were embracing the Lord Jesus. So as we all know, on Sunday... They were hailing him as the king. But come Friday, so Sunday, they were sing, sing, shouting Hosanna. On Friday, they were shouting, crucify him. Wow, like, how does that even happen? One week, and they completely turned their backs on Jesus Christ. Um, so the adoration of, of Jesus, it was really short-lived. And this brings me to point number three. Number three, the triumphant entry of Jesus marked his spiritual victory over sin and death. See, the Jewish people, they missed the part that the Messiah would first be a suffering servant. And they didn't realize that. They, 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 that, that was, whatever, for whatever reason, um, they didn't put any significance in that, or they probably passed over that, those, those parts. Um, the, the scriptures foretold that Jesus would suffer and die, and all the all the people's sins would be placed on him. And you can we can read that in Isaiah chapter fifty three. They had the Old Testament. They studied it. They studied the Old Testament um, every day at at, uh, at at the synagogues. Um, so if anyone, if, if you guys have on your own time, Isaiah fifty three. That's the clearest one of the clearest uh, prophecies of Jesus Christ that he would suffer for the sins of the world. Um, so, so like I said, how did they miss it? How did they, how did they uh, go from Hosanna to crucify him? Well, see, the thing is, the, the Jewish people, 
They were anticipating a conquering Messiah, um, a Messiah in, in the sense of like a military conqueror. They wanted, they wanted their Messiah to throw out the Romans. The Romans occupied Israel. Uh, they were in subjugation, and they knew that wasn't right. They knew that Israel was the apple of God's eye. So the, the Messiah that they were looking for was someone who would liberate Israel and put them back as, as the, 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 the premier, the first and foremost nation that all the other nations wanted to aspire to be because they were God's chosen people. Um, they wanted to be liberated both politically and nationally. So they were thinking about just this physical earth. That's what they wanted. They, they, they weren't thinking anything else as far as like um, deeper matters. <laughs> um, so they were expecting a king in the traditional sense. They, they were spiritually blind according to uh, God's, the Messiah's true purpose um, for, his, for his first coming. Um, you, and you see, they expected Jesus to come in and drive out the Romans. But what did Jesus actually do? What was his first action um, after he enters into Jerusalem? He didn't drive out the Roman people. He didn't drive out the pagans. He went to the temple and drove out. He drove out the money changers. He drove out the, the people who were corrupting his father's house. He flipped tables over. You see, that in itself is this shows you Jesus' purpose. It was a spiritual, it was a spiritual um, basically uh, a spiritual victory. He needed to cleanse his people spiritually, not not politically, not not nationally. You see. They didn't understand that it was much more. It was so much more important. Um, Jesus' spiritual mission. He came to, to to defeat sin and death, which enslaves all of humanity. It wasn't just for the Israelites. It was for us too, us Gentiles. Um, it, sin and death enslaved us all ever since the fall of Adam and Eve. Um, all sin has been passed down, and and it's what kept kept us all in bondage. Um, Christ's purpose was to restore humanity back to God, to redeem the world whom God loves dearly back to himself, because sin separates us. You see, the, like I said, the Jewish people, they didn't know that that's what Jesus was there for. But in John 3, 16, you see the most one of the most famous verses, this was Christ's purpose. For God's, and this is Jesus speaking, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He was coming to give us everlasting life, not not drive the Romans out. And uh, one one of the reasons that, uh, another reason obviously that they, they betrayed him is because there was already a plot to kill Jesus. It's part of prophecy. But there was a plot by the chief priests and the Pharisees. Um, they wanted him dead because... He was a threat to their authority. They wanted to be the top dogs. They were the teachers. They had the oracles of God. They wanted to lord it over the people. They liked to be served. They were spiritually blind, as Jesus says in the Gospels. Um, and, in, and in the Gospel of John, in this, in the passage before um, the triumphant entry in that, in that book, um, a lot of the people, the reason why they came out to meet him as well is because they heard that he raised Lazarus from the dead. And that in itself, they wanted to see Christ and they wanted to see Lazarus. And the, 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 the chief priests, they were so wicked that they wanted, they wanted to kill Lazarus as well. They wanted to kill Jesus and they wanted to kill Lazarus because they said that the whole world is going after him on account of, of Lazarus. So let's kill them both. You see, there, there, was, uh, there was a ready to plot to, to end Jesus' life. And uh, let's see. And, and that part is Jan, John chapter 12, verses 9 through 11. It reads, Meanwhile, a large, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, and not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. So they were determined. And uh, also when the crowds were shouting, Hosanna, Look at how the, the chief priest responds in Luke 19, verses 39 through 40. It says, but some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, so they were telling Jesus this, teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. 
They didn't want to hear them praising the Lord. And Jesus replies, look at how Jesus replies. If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Amen. <laughs> you cannot hold back Jesus' praises and honor and glory that's due his name. You know, the Bible also says that the, all of creation, all of creation is eagerly awaiting for to be redeemed for, for his coming. So, so because he is the king of kings. And, uh, you know, it's so amazing. If, if, if those people were to stop Jesus basically saying, he's going to get his praise one way or another. And uh, the stones would shout, you know, and I imagine the Pharisees seeing that, they would probably, you know, they, they wouldn't know what to do. Heads would blow um, <laughs> because what was in their heart, because of what was in their heart, you know, they, would, they don't want to accept Christ. Um, and also, you know, we know that Jesus predicted his death many times. Um, Christ said that I lay my life, my life down freely. No man takes it from me. Christ knew the reason why he was born was to go to the cross. But he's going to go in victoriously, <laughs> humble on a donkey. So he was doing the Father's will. And um, there's a lot of prophecies in the Old Testament about, about this. And I think it's a worthwhile endeavor for us to really study the Old Testament and, and read about uh, Jesus, uh, the, pro- the prophecies of Christ. You know, the, the first one is actually in Genesis when God tells the snake. Um, he says, I'm, uh, from the seed of the woman, um, I'm going to put enmity between the seed of the woman and you. Um, you will strike his heel, but he will crush your head. That's talking about Jesus. God already told the devil, I'm, he's going to destroy you. <laughs> You're not going to win this. So Christ's destiny was the cross. His triumphant entry was to declare sin's defeat once and for all. Um, and of course, we all know that they brought up false charges against Christ. Um, they used Judas. They bribed Judas with uh, 30 pieces of silver to uh, hand them, to hand Christ over. They uh, they basically came up with trumped up charges on, of, about blasphemy. They, they basically uh, said that Jesus was going to overthrow the Romans, and he was he was an insurrectionist and. He was, he was a rebel. So they basically accused Jesus of everything. And uh, because they had, they, they, they wanted him out. But, you know, that's what Jesus' purpose was. He had to go to the cross. He knew it because he had to save the world by his blood. He had to do the Father's will, just as Pastor David said when he was praying. That your, your will be done. And the thing is, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus... He endured the suffering of the cross because he foresaw the future joy that he would accomplish. And that's what he calls for us to do. Like as Pastor David said earlier, um, this life is hard. It's not easy. But just as Jesus Christ endured the shame and the suffering of the cross, well, then we need to endure what the trials that we are, what we're going to face in this life, follow Christ's example, because we need to foresee that future glory and that future joy that's about to be unveiled. And also, you know, he did, he did this for us. He tasted death for us so that we would pass over from this life into eternal life. In John 11, verses 25 through 26, you see, as Christians, we know we never die. And look at how Jesus puts it. Verse 25. <laughs> So Jesus was talking to, um, to uh, I believe it's Mary, well, the, the, the sister of Lazarus. Um, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? That's for us today as well. That's, what, that's, that's who our Lord is. That's why he was he was walking triumphantly into Jerusalem to 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 allow us so that we can never die. We'll live with him. We just go from this life to the next, and, and I think a twinkling of an eye, I bet, you know. And and also look at look at how look at how Paul puts it, and uh, how Jesus was victorious over sin and death in First Corinthians chapter fifteen verses fifty five through fifty seven. I love this. This is this is also. Um, Prophecy. Um, where, O oh death, is your victory? 
Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, Christ did this all for us. He went into Jerusalem to face the cross for each and every one of us, which is the good news so that we, we can have victory through Christ Jesus. So when we meditate and see the triumphant entry of Jesus on this Palm Sunday and what he accomplished for us sinners, remember, and I think we know this, but we, know, we don't deserve any of this, right. nothing at all, but he loves us so much that he doesn't hold it against us. We just have to have faith in him yeah. and ask him for forgiveness and be right. a clean, clean slave. Yeah. That's, that's who our Lord is. Um, so it just reminds us, when we meditate on this story, it reminds us how awesome and wonderful our Savior truly is and how, how much praise and honor he really does deserve. All the, he deserves our devotion and a life of praise um, to, to be uh, living sacrifices, holy and pleasing unto him. He deserves it. He's worthy of all this. Amen. And much more. Amen. And and finally, you know, that's Palm Sunday was is, was a very special day. And it has eternal significance. And guess what? We're also gonna have another day to celebrate with palm leaves. So one day in eternity, we're gonna be celebrating the, the king. Um in eternity, and, and I'll end with this, and I thought this was so cool. Revelation 7, verse 9, and it says, The great multitude in white robes. John, this is when John was recording what he was seeing in the vision. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Isn't that so awesome? And they were there to worship the, to worship the lamb, the lamb slain from the foundations of the world. So you see how the Bible, everything, everything in there is, uh, has a purpose and it all, everything will be accomplished and fulfilled. And, uh, it all points to Jesus Christ, the son of God, the savior of the world. So today, I just hope that when we leave this building, that we keep that in our hearts, that we, we, we deserve, he deserves our praise and devotion and honor. Amen. Just praise him in your hearts and how, we, and, and how we treat each other. Be of service. Be obedient to him. That's what we all need to do. And um, with that, just want to say thank you to everyone here. And uh, we'll just finish with the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this, for this awesome story, Lord God, of what you've done for us, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you had a triumphant entry, Lord God, to show us, Lord, that you, you are the one true King, Lord, and you came, Lord God, to save us from our sins, Lord. What we couldn't do for ourselves, what was impossible, was only possible with you, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and we just ask you, God, to please help us as we continue on this journey, Lord God, to following and obeying you. Help us to be servants to others and help us to share with others, Lord God, this amazing thing that you've done for us, Lord. It's not meant for us just to keep it to ourselves, Lord. So we just honor and praise you, Lord God, and we, get, we say Hosanna to you, Lord Jesus. You are, you are the, the Messiah, Lord, the one true King. Lord God, I just thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.